I'm going to um, take it away, and I uh, appreciate the uh, opportunity uh, to present to you all today. And <clears throat> um, the the application that we're going to look at, iSales 100, is a native iPhone and iPad application. So just a little heads up before we get started is uh, there's potentially, if you should choose, an interactive uh, part of this uh, where if you have your iPhone or your iPad uh, handy, uh, we can walk through a little exercise to be able to show you uh, how you can start to utilize a free version of this copy with some demo data uh, in order to figure out if it, it could be a beneficial application for you. So again, my name is Paul Ziliak with uh, XK0. I'm one of the founders of the company. Uh, XK0 has uh, roots as a, a reseller uh, in the Sage 100 world, but in 2009 uh, we really made a concerted effort uh, to start to build applications and to transform ourselves into an application company, and now we've succeeded in that role. We uh, no longer uh, work as a reseller. We are just an application developer specializing in the Sage ERP space. And the focus of our company is essential applications for distribution companies. So, you know, whether you're a manufacturer who distributes or a straight distribution company, I think you'll see a common theme in the applications that we built uh, that our applications are all about moving product in various types of ways. Uh, one of the products that we have is an online commerce application for Sage 100 uh, ERP. We call it EBM 100, and it provides really elegant, easy to implement uh, templates to complement your e-business manager solution for Sage 100. Uh, we also, one of our flagship products with our XK0 mobility is route cell solutions for Sage 100, 500, and now also for Sage ERP X3, and that's for companies who deliver products in their own vehicles. Uh, GetX, this is probably uh, the application that I might be most excited about, and we'll see a little hint of it today, but we uh, created a universal search app for Sage 100 ERP that allows you to search for virtually any data from a single browser window, saving all kinds of time on uh, navigation through your system. So you can search for the data, we organize it, and then you can browse uh, directly into your system. And the newest product that we have, we have not even done a press release uh, about this, but um, uh, we have uh, entered into an agreement with a company called Echo Global Logistics. Echo is a third-party uh, transportation logistics company, uh, a freight broker, if you will, uh, that provides very unique types of things. In fact, we're positioning this as a new category for companies who ship uh, LTL or truckload type uh, solutions in the ERP space where you know, right from within your Sage 100 system, uh, you're going to have a solution that will allow you to shop for the cheapest negotiated rates with managed services, saving time for uh, users on every shipment, and all natively integrated right within your Sage uh, 100 ERP application. And we're actually writing that application uh, for all of the, uh, the Sage ERP products. But today, we're looking at uh, one of our XK0 mobility applications that we call iSales 100, which is a native app for the iPhone and the iPad and ex exclusively for Sage 100 uh, ERP. So this is just a little, you know, FYI. Uh, did you know that about 90% of the Sage 100 or Mass 90, Mass 200 customers do not use an integrated CRM? And we think that's a very interesting fact because uh, the CR, Sage CRM server is free for Sage 100 users, and you get one user license. Let, yet, less than 10% um, <clears throat> of companies actually are attaching to use that integrated CRM. Now, we have our reasons for why we think that might be, but that's not so much the, the purpose of today's presentation. But what I will say is that we do have a quick and easy fix for that. Um, because with our iSales 100 application, we're building in a lot of the most essential functionality that you might want from a mobile CRM, but the beauty is it's all directly managed out of your Sage 100 system, so you don't have to maintain separate databases or anything. So let's see if we can all work from this premise. Um, most companies say their, their number one asset is going to be their customers, and if that's not number one, it's right up there in the you know, top two or three along with their staff. So we tend to agree that customers are our number one asset. And so, you know, imagine having an application that puts your customers in your pocket at all times 
but also includes a window into your warehouse, uh, an illustrated product catalog, and a handy product price list. So imagine further, you know, in your pocket, but not in your competitor's pocket, um, you have these other things such as uh, fully integrated into the map, calendar, email, and phone right out of the box. Uh, the ability to create sales orders and quotes following all of the pricing rules that you have within your Sage 100 system. Visibility into item quantities, open orders and invoices, summary aged info, info, uh, uh, info, all managed within your Sage 100 system and out of the box translated into Spanish or English. And if you have other language requirements, we can very easily add that as well. Um, we support barcode scanning, and we have a very exciting list of uh, feature enhancements coming forward with our XK0 mobility as well. So who's iSales 100 for? I could make the argument that anybody in your company who you want to have visibility into your customers should have iSales 100, because then anytime, anywhere, they're able to see key data about your customers and about your items. But more specifically, inside outside sales reps, executives, field-based techs, and think about this. Even your customers could download iSales 100. You could give them a user ID and password that, that only allows them to place orders or do inquiries for, them, for themselves, and you also can filter inventory so you only show them the inventory items that you want for them to see. So think about it potentially. You could have an app that's a substitute for an e-commerce site. All right, so let's move a little bit forward here. Sage 100 ERP anywhere. So a question I have is knowing your competitors have your customers in their pockets reason enough to have a mobile sales app? And I'll just let you guys decide if, if that's the case in this world that we're living in today or not. iSales 100, besides being customer-centric, uh, is also contact-centric. So I can go into the application and immediately look up based on who my contact is. I don't have to go through my customer first to be able to do it. Um, you're, it also allows you to place orders, take orders, do quotes, and then synchronize anytime you're ready to send information back. iSales 100 works in a disconnected mode. That means if you're on an airplane, if you're at a customer site and you don't have access to Wi-Fi or you're not on a cellular connection, you can continue to use the application. You just hit the synchronize button when you're ready to send orders or to update the data within your system. So how does iSales 100 work? When I'm on a customer record, as you see illustrated here, in the upper right-hand corner I have an action button. And the action button we have that at the item level, we have that at the contact level. What that does is that provides a gateway for you for all of the different activities that you can do related to that customer. So we've mentioned already we can create new orders or new quotes. And then here's some of that nice, nifty little CRM functionality that we build into it. Download, install the app, and you're automatically integrated with the default calendar, with the default email client, with your default map, and your default browser all on your iPad, all on your iPhone. <clears throat> and if the device happens to be a phone, of course you can call them straight out of the application. So stop and think about this for a minute because I think it's really important. Let's say that you hire a new sales rep and you assign a territory to that rep and in that territory they have 150 customer contacts and an average of three contacts per uh, company customer that they have. That's 450 contacts that they have. So they're carrying a mobile phone because everybody carries a mobile phone these days. How long would it take for them to have an accurate address book on their phone with all of their information? If you only used iSales 100 as a contact management tool, you could argue that the application pays for itself because all you have to do is give them a user ID password, assign their customers to them, and they'll have all of this information on their device and at their fingertips. They're also going to have open orders and open invoices with detail. Here are some other features for iSales 100. We built a hot list function. What that allows you to do is, you know, every sales rep or executive or customer service person can create groups of customers, contacts, or items to create shortcuts for them. So if you're going to a trade show 
and you know that 10 of your customers are going to be there, you can create a little hot list that reminds you constantly of how to keep in touch uh, with that customer when they're at a trade show. Or if you're making a sales trip and you're going up to North Dakota and South Dakota to visit your customers up there, you just filter out all your North Dakota, South Dakota customers by using these hot lists. Here's a little sync button on the homepage for iSales 100, and that's how we um, push orders back and forth, and it's also, also how we refresh all of the data uh, within iSales 100. <clears throat> and here's another one, too. What's, what makes an uh, application like uh, Facebook something that you might go to from time to time? You like to see what's new, right? And so it's in that spirit that we thought, you know what, we should let people know that they have new stuff in their Sage 100 system. So we built the badge alert. So when I log on to the system and I synchronize my data, in this example here, I've got three new contacts, one new customer, and one new item that's been assigned to me. And so all I have to do is tap into it, and I've got a filter on it to just show me what's new. Here's a view. This is from the iPad, and this is that illustrated uh, product catalog that I talked about. So if you have products that you sell that have a visual appeal to them, what the image that this is reading from is from the image that you attach in your item master file right within your Sage 100 system. I also do want to point out this is the one piece of functionality in our application that requires you to be connected to the internet when you access it. Um, so if you're not on a Wi-Fi, if you're not on a data plan, you actually won't even see the link for that image there. So you have to be in plan. Now the reason that we did that is because these images might be, you know, one meg megabyte each. And <clears throat> if you uh, imagine if you had, you know, 5,000 inventory items that you were bringing down to the iPad and every one of them had a one megabyte image, that the download time would be uh, not acceptable really to pass data back and forth and it also would burn through your data plan uh, you know on your on your iPhone too if you were doing it that way so I just want to point that out okay um, <clears throat> pricing so you'll see here that we see not only the standard pricing but if I'm placing an order or a quote and I have quantity break pricing if I have customer pricing you know, whatever pricing, as long as I'm using the standard pricing mechanisms within Sage 100, the iSales 100 application will recognize that pricing. And we also have visibility into the warehouse. So I can look and see all of my active warehouses for this product. I see on hand quantities on sales order. If I have on purchase information or an, on work order, uh, I'll see that information as well. All right. So uh, thanks for letting me take that time to give a little intro on that. And so I'm going to kick out of this presentation for a second. I'm actually going to go here uh, to a live iPad and iPhone as well. And I mentioned at the beginning that we're going to get a little bit uh, interactive with this demo. And I'll show you how we're going to do that here in just a moment. So bear with me as I pull up the uh, devices. This is a live device right here. That's my actual iPhone. And one second here, and I'll have my iPad pulled up. And there we go. So make one other change here, and we'll be ready to go. All right, perfect. So <clears throat> this is the interactive part uh, that I promised you at the beginning. And um, I don't have iSales 100 running on, the, on my machine right now. And what I wanted to do is take this opportunity for those of you who might have your iPad or your iPhone out right now. If you go to the App Store on your mobile device and search for iSales 100, You'll, uh, you'll find the application, so I sell space 100, and I think even if you do it without the space, it'll find it. You know, it's going to pull the application up and install it. Now, why am I doing this right now? I'm doing it for a couple of reasons. One is, you know, the best way, I think, for uh, you as users to find out if this is an application uh, that's going to work for you is, uh, is going to be to try it out for yourself. And so we created this free install. And um, 
That's kind of a bummer. It's not recognizing my finger right now. So hold on a second. So much for <clears throat> that great idea. There we go. All right. So uh, now it's installing, and I apologize for uh, that brief delay there. Here, here's what I want to point out, and this is going to take about one minute to happen. Uh, I talked about when you give an application to a salesperson about what it takes to be able to provide them with the visibility that they need to be productive selling products for you. So what we're doing right here is the exact same process that any salesperson, executive, anybody else on your team would go through to be able to start using this application. It's as simple and straightforward as what I'm showing to you right now. So it's just about done with the download and I'm going to uh, open the application and you know what, it doesn't seem to like it from that interface so I'm going to launch it from here. So if you're following along with me and I'll give you this, this info later, um, you'll notice that it's popped up here to a URL and I'm not going to touch that right there. That's actually going to a demo server uh, that, that's hosted by our company, but what everybody can do if you like is you can add a user ID of demo and a password of password. I need to shorten that password so I don't have to type so much. And I'm going to go ahead and log in. So now I'm a sales rep, okay? And so I've had customers that are assigned to me. So I click on my synchronized button and I'm going to choose sync all. And what it's doing now is it's going out uh, and this will take less than a minute, uh, it's going to create a database for me of all the customers on my iPad. Meanwhile, I've already got the application on my iPhone, you know, and I'm going to pop up here so that you can see it. Uh, I'm going to start the demo on the iPad and I might switch into the iPhone a little bit, um, but what I do want to point out is the functionality is identical across both applications. All right, so uh, I'm the customer and you know what, I'm going to take this here, I'm just going to move this to the side so you can see that you know we do fully support the uh, changing uh, of the orientation of the device and just show you a few things here. So I'm going to look for a company called American Business Futures and the application very nicely takes advantage of the search functionality that I have uh, given to me by Apple and um, <clears throat> just a couple quick things just to be able to show you that you know that the maps actually work and I can get directions to go to my customer site. We pull down all the ship to information. I actually have a phone app uh, on my device, so if, you're, if you just downloaded the application to your iPad uh, and you click on the phone and it doesn't do anything, it's because you don't have a phone app. Um, and I'd be happy to share with you info about the app that I use on the phone because it's actually a wonderful thing to have a phone on the iPad. You know, I tap on the email address and it automatically loads my email client and so on and so forth. I have additional information here, ship to price level, data last payment, tax schedule, customer on hold. That's all information that you can drive uh, from the back end of your system. You can determine what uh, the users are actually going to see. So I have my orders, um, you know, open invoices, uh, aging information, uh, things of that nature. You know, if I look at um, open invoices, uh, I've got the detail of those open invoices and this is going to be for you know everything that's unpaid and then everything of course in the uh, open sales orders that's going to be um, based on what has not yet shipped. So uh, I'm going to come back here to American Business Futures and uh, just real quickly I'm going to put in a new uh, sales order and I'm going to put a comment in here. It's going to help me find uh, this a, a little bit later and I'm going to uh, just uh, call this uh, I sales. Actually, how about this? I'm, a, I'm an old Hoosier, and they're playing today to try and advance to the Elite Eight in the NCAA men's basketball tournament. So I'm just going to put uh, Hoosiers. That's going to be my uh, quote in there. All right, and a few other things that I skipped past. You know, like the uh, you know the ship date, and and these are all standard fields within the Sage 100 application. I can choose my ship to location. And then I can start adding items to the system. Now, I just want to point out, for those of you who might be inclined to do barcoding, once I've started the order, I can just start scanning uh, with an approved scanning device uh, that we have. So 
um, but I'm not scanning right now. I'm just searching for a lamp that my customer wants to buy. So I'm going to choose a lamp, and uh, I'm going to go here. I see it's $129, but you know what? Before I do that, I want to look at my warehouse and see how many that I have. You know what? I want the West Warehouse, and I'm going to clean that sucker out. I'm going to buy seven of them, and so it's going to update my price. And because I really needed to clear out that warehouse, and I'm grateful uh, to my customer for taking it from there, I'm going to give them a 2% discount. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and save that item. And then, uh, you know, they also had indicated to me that they wanted uh, these desk files as well. And I don't care what warehouse those go from, so I'm going to have that go from warehouse one. And this one, I just want to illustrate, $84 is the price that the product comes up with. But if I'm going to uh, sell them 10 you'll see it automatically change that pricing from $84 dollars to seventy eight dollars and twelve cents and I'm gonna go ahead and save that and I'm gonna save the whole order now I can edit these orders you know up until the time uh, that I uh, synchronize it so you can see here that I have this order in my shopping cart uh, for this customer um, but uh, what I'm gonna do here uh, and, and also you know this is my overall shopping cart so this would be for every customer who I've worked with since then, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to synchronize uh, this order and send it back to the system. And um, let's hold on one second. Bear with me. So uh, again, to synchronize my order. So this is a separate synchronization uh, that we do. It's not pulling down new customer information for me, uh, but what it is doing is just sending the order. So you'll see my orders just went uh, from one to zero. Now back on the phone, actually, you know, if I go to look at that customer right now and I look at the uh, the open orders, you know, I'm not going to see that. Uh, that order with the uh, um, that I had just put into the system. So, but if I do go back here now to the sync button and I do the sync all, now it's going to pull that open order down onto the uh, device. While that's happening, I'm going to go back into the and just point out again so you get, have a sense of the. Uh, um, you know, how this works from a um, performance standpoint. You know, this is going out over the Internet, and it's showing me a picture of that lamp right there. So that's happening in real time, uh, you know, with a good solid Wi-Fi uh, connection uh, that I have. All right. Um, back over here, I'm pulling out this customer, American Business Futures. This is what the action button looks like on the phone. And uh, if I, I should have uh, one more open order, uh, that's down here now, and this would be the uh, the seven lamps and the uh, the ten desks, and um, and that's the uh, that's the the scoop on that. That's most of the functionality on the actual mobile device, and so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the back end. And I'm going to show you how this all works back here. So this is the demo server uh, where the orders actually go into. And part of our solution, the way the synchronization works, is through what we call XK0 Web Services. It's through this module that resides right within your Sage 100 system where we manage the data. So you know, here's my iSales 100 demo user. And you'll see this is mapped to a company code and a salesperson code. So if you have a salesperson that um, might book sales or inquire on customers on multiple companies, all you need to do is give them a separate user ID for each different company code, uh, and, and that's, how that's, gonna, um, that's how that will happen for them. <clears throat> I mentioned uh, that we can filter uh, information by customer and by item. So let's say that I have... A, a customer or a salesperson rather 
whose territory is just the state of Wisconsin. All right. So what I did, I have the whole, you know, product or I'm sorry, customer master file available to be able to filter that out. But maybe the the state is uh, Wisconsin, and um, I have to know my demo data here. So I'm going to say, you know, Wisconsin and California, that good old traditional um, territory. Now, if I come here and I go back to my uh, phone and I go to iSales, back up here, you'll notice that I have, I've got 20 customers. Well, now I've put that filter and I'm going to synchronize my data again. <clears throat> And when this is done, I'm going to have something less than 20 customers, something less than 23 contacts, but I should still have 100 uh, inventory items. And this should just be about be done. And there you have it. I have 16 customers. And just a spot check here, uh, there's Newport Beach, California, and there's Fountain Valley, California, and there's Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and I think you guys get the picture now. The reason we built a native application to be able to manage the data for iSales 100 is because we do believe that one of the reasons that CRM does not have a high rate of adaptability is because people have to install a separate app, learn a different interface, and have a more complicated type of integration to be able to do it, and we think that we can provide a lot of that kind of functionality, you know, right here. Now, um, you guys who are doing the demo along with me, you know, as I'm changing this for me, just so you know, I'm changing it uh, for you. So we put rules for being able to filter for customers. We also put rules to be able um, to limit your inventory and also to do things like recognize alias items, customer aliases, you know, do we want discontinued items or not? Do we want to publish additional information, uh, you know, about the products or uh, about the customers? That's the, the user-defined fields that we have. And um, other rules at the user level, do we allow them to modify a price? Do we automatically put their orders on sales orders? Or do we allow them to create orders or not? If I deselect that button, what I've done is I've just put iSales 100 and made it an inquiry only application, all right? And then I also have uh, some rules for what types of invoices, credit memos, debit memos, payment info, uh, et cetera, that I get to the device uh, for the open uh, invoices, all right? So that's the, uh, that's the back end of uh, that. And I wanted to just go and show here, just to kind of complete the circle, <clears throat> Uh, for this uh, for this order, and I should have uh, actually. You know what? I forgot about that. See that comment Hoosiers? Uh, I just wanted to show off on that universal search app that we have. So this is GetX, and I'm just typing on uh, the word Hoosiers, and it found Hoosiers right there in a comment field, and I can launch my sales order. <coughs> based on that criteria. So think about the power of that. You know, I can start new sales orders with a phone number. Um, I can start new sales orders just with the name of someone. I can search for uh, extended inventory item descriptions and so on. Uh, so I just wanted to point that out. Uh, on the lines tab, here are the seven of the lamps that I ordered, and here are the, uh, the ten of the desk files that I had. Uh, if I change this on the back end, right? Now I've just changed that from seven to nine. You guys can probably guess where I'm going with this, you know, already. I'm going to go ahead and synchronize this while I continue to talk. But, you know, um, just by synchronizing that on the back, I'm going to update uh, that open sales order. And uh, what else? You know, I'm just about done here. But, you know, for fun, I'm going to search on the lamp. One other thing about that GetX, if there's an image associated with that, um, my search criteria, it'll show it uh, to me uh, in that search lookup. So that's everything that I have 
uh, right now from a demo standpoint, what I wanted to jump back to is uh, just a few other bits of essential information that you should know about iSales 100. iSales 100 requires version 4.4, 4.5, uh, or 2013. We support iOS 5 and iOS 6, and those of you who have iPhones or iPads, that might mean something to you. Uh, supporting iPhone 4 and 5, all versions of the iPad, including the iPad mini, all versions of the iPod Touch. The single only requirement that we have from your Sage system is that your server have something called the IIS plugin from Microsoft. Most modern servers already have that plugin, and it, we just need to configure a secure port to allow data to be transmitted between iSales 100 and your Sage 100 server. Um, but if you don't have that on your server, it's a free download from Microsoft. <clears throat> and uh, what else? All managed within Sage 100 ERP. We did this to increase the likelihood that people will actually use it. <laughs> so users, devices, customers, items, security events, um, you know, we built it into uh, role maintenance to lock down certain things for you uh, as well. And then uh, lastly, to learn more about iSales 100 from your phone, from your iPad, from your iPod, from your um, <clears throat> iPod Touch, just go to the App Store, search on iSales 100, and you can download it to the device. You'll automatically have the path. You can use user ID of demo, password of password. <clears throat> There's our contact info for more information. And then just a couple other things. One is about pricing. Um, iSales 100, our current pricing is $2,500. That includes everything on the back end, all the data management, includes the web services and your first five device licenses. And then we charge $99 per device license after the first five. Um, if you would like your own private login for iSales 100 and if you would care to see some of your part numbers and descriptions and images and all of that stuff to see what that looks like um, we'd like to keep that to a limited number like maybe 20 or so just so you can see some examples we'd be happy to have you send us that information and we can build you your own private little demo site uh, for you to evaluate uh, with yourself and your team uh, otherwise, you can reach us at info at xk0.com uh, at the phone number listed, uh, and you can ask for either Amanda Lubert uh, or myself. And that's pretty much that. You know, I'm open for questions. Thank you, Paul. Great presentation. We do have a question. Uh, we have a question from the audience. Uh, will this be available on Android eventually? <laughs> Uh, the, the answer to that is, uh, is, is yes. We actually we have two different um, product paths that we're taking. iSales 100 will continue down uh, an iPad, I, uh, you know, an Apple mobile device only route, but we actually are in tandem. We're in development uh, where we'll have, you know, virtually uh, identical functionality and, and potentially even more uh, on a new application that will be uh, for Apple. It'll be for Android, and it'll also be for the new uh, Windows Surface RT, the new Windows mobile platform. And I and do, ha I do have a poll open here. If we can ask the audience just to take a brief moment to answer this poll, are you interested in learning more about iSales 100? And I'll take a look at see if there's more questions. Paul, this is a, a great solution. I see tremendous opportunity for you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Well, I appreciate the time that everyone's taken out of their busy day today. Feel free to reach out to us anytime. Uh, again, it's a free, you know, fully functioning uh, demo that you'll get through iTunes or the App Store on your mobile device. And, um, Look forward to hearing you all from you all again in the near future. Well, 100% of the audience is interested in learning more, and I just have one more question, if I may ask the audience. 
Do you have mobile sales needs outside of what you saw today? Take just a brief moment to uh, answer that question. You know, and while you're answering that question, you know, I'll just, you know, our perspective on that is that um, we're, we're kind of in a new era with mobile applications, in large part thanks to Apple, and now, you know, Android and, and Microsoft is trying to get on board with that as well. But, you know, we have stable platforms. We have reliable app stores to be able to distribute the apps and, and all of that. And it's a fast emerging field. Not every industry is going to be served equally well by the same applications too. So we're, you know, we, we've become very friendly with a lot of other folks who have apps out there too. So we're happy to connect you anytime. You know, if this doesn't feel like the right app for you, we'd be happy to tell you about other solutions that we know about in the marketplace. And I see that 80% of you have voted and we do have a, a yes. Um, answer and I was wondering if whomever had indicated yes if you might raise your hand so that we can collaborate live with you or indicate your needs uh, by clicking the question mark next to your name on the webinar pane and uh, if you can indicate what your mobile needs are in that question then we can read those live and uh, Paul you can answer those okay I see 80% of you have voted. I have a couple of yeses. And I'm going to go ahead and allow everyone to see your contact information. Paul, if you could put your contact information back up there just in case somebody would like yeah. to reach out to you. Yeah. And I don't see anyone raising their hands or indicating your question. If you do have an idea of your mobile sales needs that you did not see today, we would love to hear about them. And it's possible that we can um, get you in touch with uh, a provider that can, can uh, address your specific requirements. Um, so we'd love to hear about them. I'm not seeing that, Paul. Okay. All right. Well, that's uh, that's fine. But you know what I would like to do once again is you know thank everyone for joining. Certainly, thanks to uh, Kathy to uh, uh, Kathy and Adrian at ERP Bar for uh, hosting this event and the Sage Partners uh, who participated in it and the uh, the Sage users. Uh, XK Zero will be at Sage Summit. Uh, this July in Washington, D.C., and if you've never been to a Sage Summit conference, it's a wonderful event where you'll see, you know, other mobile solutions and a host of other types of things, and we hope to see you there. Well, thank you so much, Paul. Everybody, thanks for joining us, taking time out of your day to learn a little bit more about this uh, solution, and we'll be in touch after the webinar. We did record this webinar and everybody will get a copy of uh, the presentation after the webinar. And thank you so much. Everybody have a fantastic day. Thank you, Paul. All right. Thank you, Adrienne.